Fish and chips. Everybody loves it. You guys want to know how to make this fabulous meal? Look at that. Huh? You guys want to know how to make this? Come on, stay tuned. Get in the kitchen, get some cooking utensils out, and let's do this together. I am back for another recipe today um, and today's recipe is really really a good recipe we're doing um, fish and chips so here are all the ingredients that you're gonna need uh, for fish and chips actually we're gonna do a vodka beer battered uh, fish and chip um, so if you're interested in that stay tuned because here we go uh, I'm gonna run through the ingredients like I do every time I do a video and we're gonna start over here with um, we got 200 grams of all-purpose flour, 200 grams of rice flour. Um, sometimes rice flour can be a little hard to come by, but it, it does work in this recipe very well. So I would urge you guys, if you're going to make this, use the rice flour. Um, you can double up on the all-purpose flour if you'd like to, um, but the rice flour, you know, it is kind of recommended to do it with this particular recipe. Um, uh, this here might not be in the aisle where your regular flour is, okay? Um, this could be in an aisle where there's gluten-free food. It could also be in the international um, aisle as well. So uh, there's a little hint for you if you can't find it in your flour aisle. All right, so we'll move on. Here I got a little bit of honey. I got a little bit of salt. I've got some beautiful, beautiful cod fillets here. Uh, that I'm going to cut down, just break them down just a little bit more than what they are now. I went to my local fish store, um, seafood store this morning, and these are fantastic. Uh, okay, so we'll move on over here. I got um, about a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I've got a teaspoon of um, baking powder, excuse me. Uh, two uh, russet potatoes. I have a lemon for garnishing. I have 300 milliliters of um, vodka. I'm using Lebo vodka. Uh, you can use whatever vodka you want to. And I have 300 um, milliliters of beer. Uh, you use whatever beer you want. We're using this for the carbonation for air bubbles. So um, that's what we're doing. So here are the um, ingredients and we will get on uh, with this recipe. All right, so here we go with the potatoes. I'm gonna show you guys how to cut these up. These gotta be a little bit thick. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to square off some of these potatoes too. Uh, pretty simple, uh, nothing hard. Let me grab a knife. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're just gonna square off the edge, just like that. And we're gonna square off this edge, just like this. We're gonna square off that edge. I'm using, uh, I don't know if I uh, said it or not, but I'm using a, uh, a russet potato here. Um, that's just what I chose to do today. You, but you can use a, a Yukon Gold, you can use whatever, whatever other potato that you want to use is totally fine. Okay, so we have a potato that's pretty square. The, the, the only reason you don't have to do this, the only reason why I'm doing this is because of presentation at the end. Other than that, you, you can just leave these uh, exactly how the potato is. You don't have to take the time and cut this, but this is, you'll see, um, you'll see what happens after I plate this, uh, what the squaring off does to it. Okay, so that looks pretty, pretty square. So we're going to start cutting our potatoes up. Now, kind of like my rule of thumb is, is you want to either take your thumb or your forefinger and that's where you're going to wind up cutting it from right so if you took your thumb it's somewhere around right here so these are the sizes that you want to do right so you're going to have some good sized potatoes that's what the whole thing of fish and chips is and then you're going to take this one and you're going to cut this 
into a third. Okay, just like that. And these are going to be your, your potatoes. So I know that might look a little bit big, they're meant to be. Okay, this and this. And the same thing, actually this one here, because it's the end piece, you can just cut it in half. Okay, so once again, we're just going to take this potato, we're going to cut it in thirds going this way. Just like that. And then we're going to turn around, go one there, and one there. Okay, just like that. One there, and one there. They should try to get them somewhat even uh, because cooking time uh, makes a difference. You know, some might be a little bit bigger. If you see some that are just like really, really big, uh, you could trim those up. This one here, I might just take the edge off just like that. So other than that, they're pretty much all the same. Uh, I'm going to take these over and this one here is a little bit, a little bit big too. Okay, so here's our, our fries for our uh, fish and chips. I'm gonna take you over and put these in a pot of boiling water and we're gonna leave them there for probably about 20 minutes until they're fork tender. Okay, that's the catch here, until they're fork tender. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have my potatoes in my Dutch oven pot here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse these, okay? We're gonna rinse these a couple of times. Could be two, could be one, could be two. Depends on how much starch is in these potatoes. But we're gonna turn around and kind of roll these around a little bit get some of the starch off them until the water kind of runs clear um, so you can see you can see how murky it is I do these the same exact way that I do um, my hash brown or yeah my hash browns uh, I'm sorry, hash browns, home fries. Um, that is up on my YouTube channel right now if you want to take a peek at that on how to make some really, really awesome home fries. So I'm a big fan of uh, removing the starch from your potatoes. So let me do this a couple more times. And when the water runs clear, I will bring these to the stove, put them on high, bring them up to a boil. You can see how clear the water is. The only thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put a little bit of salt in the water. Not much, just a couple pinches. And I got my heat on high. Um, I'm gonna let these come up when you start to see the water boil. It's gonna be like probably 15 minutes, um, you know, or so. I guess it, it depends on, on on how big you cut your potatoes. This this part of the recipe is very difficult to, uh, to say exactly when it's gonna, your potatoes are gonna be done. But you want them just like if you were making a potato salad or you're making, um, you know, regular mashed potatoes. Uh, you want to be able to put the fork in or put a knife in them, and you want to be able to, it, it should go in smooth, okay? So that's where you want to get these two, and then we're gonna take them out here. We're gonna put them on a wire rack, which I have right here. Okay, so these have been going for about 20 minutes. All right, so now we are gonna let these sit here and cool. And we're going to let these cool down to about room temperature, so these may take a half hour to cool. Then we're going to put these in the refrigerator, um, and we're going to let these get cold. Because right now, these are so delicate because of what you just did. You know, you just cooked them, you just boiled them. So you could see, like, the white, see the white part right here? It almost looks like cheese, um, like Parmesan cheese. That is what you want. There's nothing wrong with that. It's exactly what you want. But just be careful with these because these are so delicate right now. Okay, so I'm going to let these rest for a little while. I'm going to clean up a little bit of my mess here. And we're going to show you. We're going to fry these up. And uh, I'll get the oil ready. And we'll be back with you guys uh, probably within an hour. But because of technology, I'll be back with you in probably two seconds. Okay, so I cleared um, a lot of my cutting board off, and what we're going to do is we're going to start making the batter. So we're going to take the um, all-purpose flour, 200 grams. It equals to about one and a quarter cup, okay? I am going to sift this just to make it pretty fine. So we're just going to dump it in. We're just going to get some of the lumps out of it, just because that's how 
a lot of flour comes sometimes it'll be a little compacted so we're just going to do this okay and then we're also going to add the rice flour in as well just like that this is very simple it's not very very complicated they, and then everything is sifted okay so we're going to set this aside um, we're also going to throw in our bacon powder this is once again this is one teaspoon of bacon powder so we're just going to dump that in uh, we're going to throw in the cayenne pepper which is a half a teaspoon and then we're going to whisk this before we add our wet ingredients so we're just going to basically just combine this a little bit just like this just make sure it's all incorporated all combined and I am going to add just a a pinch of salt, a couple of pinches of salt. Yeah, we'll do that. A couple of pinches of salt. That looks good. Okay. Okay, so now for our now for our wet ingredients, we're gonna take a little bit of honey. Um, we're only gonna do about a tablespoon of this. Alright, so you just kinda just kinda eye what a what a tablespoon would be. You can measure it as well, that's fine. Um, that's just for color for the batter. So the honey's in. We're going to pour in the vodka. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to start to mix this. Okay. This is going to become very, very clumpy. So you can see it's, it's clumping up automatically. Uh, so we take our beer. We're going to pour some beer in. Now if you guys don't want to use... Uh, beer in this recipe. You got kids. It, 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 believe it or not, the alcohol is going to, you know, cook off as you fry this. So you don't have to be super concerned about, you know, everybody getting drunk at the table or whatever. If you're going to have some fish and chips, uh, so no need to worry about that. Actually, as soon as this hits the oil, uh, that vodka is going to burn right off. So you're not even going to taste it. Now you will smell it. It, it does smell. Uh, like there's a lot of vodka in here. Okay, so what we're doing is we're trying to, at this point, get this batter a little thinner than a pancake batter. So now we just take it easy. We just add little by little, right? Okay, so this is, this actually looks pretty good. You want it a little bit runny, but you don't want it you don't want it crazy right something like that okay so there's our batter um, if you have any left in the bottle of the beer drink that up um, somewhere there's got to be a party right um, and you're cooking so either a glass of wine or some beer anyways let's move on with this okay so the batter is done um, we're gonna sit this aside for a little bit we're just gonna let this rest a little bit I'm gonna heat some oil up and we'll get frying the fish. Move on now and I'm gonna cut this fish uh, in, in portions. I'm gonna use both of these. This is beautiful, beautiful fish. Very, very white, very good. No smell, obviously it's very fresh. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a knife. Okay, and you want a piece of fish. You don't want it like super small. And I'm not gonna do a fish fry. So if I was doing a fish fry, I would cut it down like this but we're not going to do that right we're not going to cut it that way so what we're going to do is because i want something that you can actually pick up in your hand and dip it okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cross cut diagonal just like this okay all right look at how beautiful look at how beautiful that is nice and white on the inside wonderful this is this is going to be a great meal and i'm going to do the same on this side so this is about a pound and a third so um you know you can do the math on look at that how beautiful is that okay so these are going to be our portions now the only thing i did do uh to this that i might have forgot to say is i just salted this a little bit and put them back in the refrigerator just to keep them nice and cold before we dip them in our, our batter. But first, before we do that, we're going to dip these in flour. Then we're going to dip them in the batter and we're going to fry them up. We're going to fry these at 365 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I just pulled the potatoes out of the um, refrigerator. I let these sit in there for, uh, you can remember like we cooked these. I can't go too far with it here. Um, these 
uh, french fries or chips, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these were in the freezer, I'm sorry, the refrigerator for um, yeah, probably an hour or so, I would say. You got to get them nice and you want to get them because they're cooked. You want to get them, um, you know, so they're not so pliable, so they'll actually fry. Okay, so our, our temperature, I do have a thermometer in here, as you can see. Uh, the oil is at 280, so we're going to take the cold chips and we're going to put them in the oil. And we're not going to overcrowd this, so remember that these french fries slash chips are very cold. Uh, so we don't want to lose a lot of temperature um, in the oil. So we're only going to, we're going to fry these in two batches. Um, we're not going to fry them for too long. Uh, we're going to uh, fry them for probably only about, I don't know, just a few minutes. The only thing you're looking for here is you're looking to put just a little bit of a crust on them. Uh, you know, maybe to a point where you're getting a little brown spots on them. And then you're going to pull them and that's it. That's all you're going to do. Uh, this is the first fry because we're going to fry them again. Um, in the next fry we're going to go to excuse me we're going to um, fry these at like 350 to 370 uh, so once that happens that's when you're going to get all the color on them and then they're going to be ready to plate and eat so so this is what we got going on um, I'm going to uh, cut the video for a second I'm going to finish these up put the second batch in and I will be back to show you guys exactly what the color of these are supposed to look like when they're done at 280 degrees. Okay, so I am ready to pull the second batch of fries. Now, it's probably gonna be very, very uh, difficult to see exactly what I'm talking about, but if you look, I don't know if you can see it, you're probably not. If you look right here, uh, you're gonna see little brown spots, okay? Like they're cooking, obviously. Um, and this is when you wanna pull them. Uh, you don't want to let them go much between there because, like I said, it's a double fry. Uh, you're frying them at this temperature. And then as soon as these are out of the pan or out of the pot, what we're going to do is we're going to boost the temperature up. And, yep, see, so they're done. they got little brown spots on them, so these are done. So we just transfer these to a wire rack. Yeah, see? Little brown spots on them. Okay, so this is what you do. Uh, that's the first fry. So now we're going to boost the temperature up and we're going to drop them back in at about three, I don't know, anywhere, probably about 370, 375, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, so we're just going to wait for the temperature to come back up and we'll be on the frying them again. All right, uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, so my oil is almost at temperature for this fish. So um, I have my fish just off camera here. Um, what I'm, this is the fish that I just got done cutting up. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in flour. And we're going to do this for each piece. Now the, the, <laughs> the reason why you put this in flour like this is so your batter sticks to it. Now I've made mistakes before as far as not flouring your fish. And what happens is, you know, you know the batter slides right off. So it's very, very important to do this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to, just like this, right? You know, you don't want a lot on there. You want to shake most of it off, okay? So, but as long as there's a little bit of flour on that, that's all you're looking for, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna do each piece, the corners, the ends, everything, right? Okay. All right. Just like that. Pat it all off, all the excess. Okay, and put it aside. Okay, just like that. Now this fish isn't going to fry for too long. Um, the temperature is at 365 degrees when we drop these, so you're only going to you're only going to turn around and and cook these until the batter is um, you know golden brown. That's and then the fish will be done on the inside. The fish will be perfect. Um, won't be tough, won't be rubbery, nothing like that. Everything will be perfect with it. Okay, so, yep, fish is, uh, the fish oil is exactly where it's supposed to be at 365. 
I'm just going to give my, my batter another, another quick turn, just like that. We're going to drop these in the batter, just like that. Okay, now we're going to switch over to a pair of tongs. You know, if you have another, another way of doing this, you can do that. Now we're going to let some of this batter run off, just like you see it happening here. Okay. And then when it's almost done running, you're just going to go back and forth in the, and then you're just going to lay it down. Simple as that. We're going to do two pieces at once. Um, we're not going to do it all at once because you know, I don't want to overcrowd the pan. Um, and you'll see. Okay. So the second one, just like that. And once again, just like that, let it go. Okay. You will get a reaction. You've seen that reaction there. That is the alcohol burning off. Okay. So you got to, you do have to be careful as far as that's concerned. You got, you know, don't overdo it. All right. So we're going to fry these up. I'm going to fry the next two pieces up too. I'll be right back with you guys in a couple of minutes. Okay. Tell me that ain't beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, Okay. And remember, uh, the more batter that you put on it, you know, I let them drain a little bit after I batter them up. The reason why I do that is because I don't want the, the batter too thick on the fish, right? You know, I want enough, but I don't want too much. Uh, so, you know, just remember that if you don't drain that and you put it directly in here, you're going to have a really thick batter. You know, if that's what you like, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, I kind of like it somewhere in the middle. Okay, so these are these are now done. Look, golden brown. That is going to be absolutely delicious. Okay, so these are done. Uh, I'm just taking these now and I'm just putting these on a on a plate with a paper towel just to drain some of the grease out of them. Look, it'll be a postcard. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. All right, so the second batch of French fries are almost done. Uh, you can see how they're coming about. They're coming up really good, uh, but we're gonna let them go just a little bit longer. Uh, just a little side note here too. Um, I'm cooking on a, an electric range. Um, if it was my choice, I would not be cooking on an electric range. Um, so it's very difficult to uh, maintain your temperature. Uh, if for at least for oil, it's very very difficult because the burner keeps coming on keeps going off keeps going on keeps coming off You all know the deal um, with a gas range uh, You can be a little bit more consistent with the oil temperature, but I'm having really good luck because you know I have a thermometer here. Uh, it does help um, So, you know for you guys that have electric ranges uh, maybe invest a few dollars or so into a Thermometer that may help you guys if it uh, If you guys have a problem um, Maintaining temperature at least it'll give you a guide. Okay, um, so look at say what how gorgeous. They are right. They're beautiful absolutely beautiful They're not too difficult to uh, to do french fries, you know you cut them up you rinse them you get the starch out of them uh, You put them uh, you, you know you cut them up to size just like this you put them in the refrigerator for an hour, take them out, hit them the first time at 280 degrees until you get just a little bit of brownness on the edges or whatever, take them out, and then you're going for a second bath at uh, 365. Uh, that's very important. All right, look, hey. And another thing, um, before I forget, uh, usually one large uh, potato uh, whatever potato you want to use, you can use a Yukon Gold. These are uh, happen to be russet potatoes, uh, which are very good. Um, it, it, it takes well uh, to a French fry uh, or a chip, whatever you want to guys want to call these. Um, so, uh, just uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked because I don't want these to burn. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, um, back to what I was saying. Usually one large potato. Uh, uh, for a serving uh, so if that guy that helps you guys out okay so here here's what it is now right look at these they're beautiful 
All right, so these are done. We're pulling those. We're going to put them on our, our baking tray over here with a, um, a screen on it and a paper towel. And then the only thing that we're going to do over here is we're going to kill the heat on the oil, obviously, because we are done with that. And now we are going to show you guys this here. Look at those. They're phenomenal. Okay, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some salt on these, let them cool down for a bit, and then I'm going to plate them up. I am ready to plate uh, this meal. Uh, this meal looks fantastic. It tastes fantastic. Um, so here we go. Let's let's plate up this fish and chips. Okay, so we have a nice big, nice big piece of fish right there. Huh? gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous and then we're gonna do something like this okay we're gonna take a little bit of fries over here and a little bit of fries over on this side okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of ketchup in here for the fries and we're going to put in some homemade tartar sauce. Um, I'll have a, a, a video on how to make your own tartar sauce um, so you guys can click on that video too. Okay, um, and then we're just going to take, obviously you can't have, you can't have uh, fish and chips without a little bit of lemon, right? So we're just going to we're just going to do this, okay, and maybe something like that. All right, so this is my fish and chips. I hope you guys make this. This is, is very, very delicious, and um, yeah, I'll show you what the inside of one of these pieces look like. It's, look at, nice and flaky. Look at that, okay. Oh God, I gotta taste this. I have to, I've been drooling, not tasting this. Mmm, it's phenomenal. So, so good. Okay, all right everybody. If you guys make this meal, I'm sure you're gonna love this. Um, recipe will be up soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, once again, if you like this, subscribe to my channel, uh, The Faceless Cook, and like and subscribe, uh, like and share as well. Okay, until the next video, everybody be safe and have yourself a great day.